uncle. In the small town of Santa Cecilia, there lived a boy named Miguel Rivera. His house was full of family, including his great-grandmother, Mama Coco. Every year on Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead, his family shared the memories of relatives who had passed on. Miguel's abuelita would tell the story of his great-great-grandmother, Mama Imelda, whose heart had been broken by her musician husband. Because of him, there was one rule in the Rivera household. No music. But Miguel loved music. In his secret hideout, he learned to play guitar by watching videos of his favorite musician, Ernesto de la Cruz. Feeling inspired and brave, Miguel and his dog, Dante, snuck out of the house to perform in a local talent show. But on the way out, Dante jumped onto the family ofrenda, or altar. Mama Imelda's photo tumbled down with a crash. That was when Miguel made a discovery. Mama Imelda's husband was holding a guitar, and it looked very familiar. Mamá Coco's papá was Ernesto de la Cruz, Miguel cried. I'm going to be a musician. But because of their family role, his abuelita took his guitar and destroyed it. Smash! Miguel ran as fast as he could to Ernesto's tomb, where the famous guitar still hung. Taking it off the wall, he said, Please don't be mad. I need this to be a musician like you and he gave the legend's guitar a strum. All of a sudden, Miguel noticed all the skeletons. They had followed the path of marigold petals to visit their living relatives for Dia de los Muertos. To return to the land of the living, Miguel would need a blessing from one of his dead family members. So he and Dante crossed the marigold bridge into the land of the dead. Miguel found Mama Imelda, but she said she wouldn't give him her blessing if he wanted to be a musician. Miguel had to find another way. So he teamed up with a skeleton named Hector, who said he knew Ernesto de la Cruz. With some shoe polish, Hector made Miguel look like a skeleton. They traveled all over looking for Ernesto. They even performed together in a talent show. But Miguel was running out of time. If he didn't get Ernesto's blessing soon, he'd turn into a real skeleton and never get home. So he ditched Hector to find his great-great-grandpa on his own. Miguel snuck into Ernesto's fiesta at the tippy top of a tall tower. But the place was so crowded, Miguel couldn't get to Ernesto. So Miguel belted out a song. Everyone watched as he sang and fell into Ernesto's pool. Splash! The skeleton saw that he was a living boy. Ernesto was overjoyed. I have a great, great grandson. But then Hector appeared, and as the two men argued, Miguel learned the dark truth. His great-great-grandpa had poisoned Hector and stolen his songs to become famous. Miguel was shocked to see Ernesto's face turn cold. Ernesto explained that he couldn't risk letting the world know the truth. Then he threw Miguel and Hector down, down, down into a dark pit. Hector told Miguel that the songs he'd written were all for his family, and there was a special lullaby he would always sing for his daughter, Coco. Remember me. Miguel thought of Mama Imelda's photo and the unidentified man. It's you. Hector, you are my great-great-grandpa. Suddenly, 
Mama Imelda and Dante came to their rescue. But Hector began to disappear. His daughter was starting to forget him. Mama Imelda and Hector sent Miguel home with their blessing. Back in the land of the living, Miguel rushed to Mama Coco. He sang Remember Me to remind her of her papa. She typically didn't talk much, so Miguel was thrilled when she began to sing along. Mama Coco kept her papa's memory alive by sharing stories of him with her relatives. At last, the Riveras realized that music could bring them closer together. And now Miguel knew he could follow his dream and become a musician with his family's support. Thank you.